Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sunil, sir. And it's a great honor for me to give this talk. Uh, again, I'd like to thank the organizing committee and also congratulating the, uh, the new college and also the new uh, grant from the ICR. I'm sure it will have a huge impact on the meat industry and also a lot of students. So in the next 20 to 25 minutes, uh, I'll give an overview about some of the roles why the meat industry need to be worried about uh, producing more meat, a uh, little bit about the production system, and some of the how the meat industry is uh, purchasing and selling different type of cuts of meat, both in India and US, and a little bit about the processed meat, why it is more important, and towards the end, how this COVID small virus has changed the entire world, and also the impact on the meat industry, End of the day, why we care about meat industry. It's more about producing some high quality protein. Uh, it's more about the global security. Uh, I know I'm the last speaker. I listened to some of the talk today and yesterday and day before. Uh, you may hear a lot of stuff, uh, some of the stuff by the previous speaker. So it might be a, a reputation, but I'll try to be brief and I'm, I'm going to uh, pitch the overall view. So I don't. Uh, discuss more uh, mechanistic basis, but uh, give a big picture of how it is happening in the US and also around the world, uh, why it is important. So a little bit background, uh, I'm from Oklahoma, it's a central state. Uh, it's almost one o'clock here. So if I sleep, please wake me up. Uh, what is Oklahoma famous for? Uh, it's a lot of agriculture. You can see wheat, uh, corn, and also uh, it's a land of cowboys. A lot of cattle industry, beef industry, uh, you can see different type of operation. And also other famous is the oil industry. Uh, we from Kerala, a lot of people in Gulf, we heard stories, they drill oil from the sea or sea floor. But here you can get the oil from the land. So that's one of the big industry and notoriously tornadoes. So it's really notorious for tornadoes, I'm sure. You hear once in a while, uh, tornado hit, so and so place. So we are kind of a very prone area. So coming back to the presentation, like why this poultry production is important. So if you look last 30 years or 40 years, so globally, we were able to produce more food. Uh, at the same time, if you look at the undernourishment, it decreased drastically. So I'm sure we, we heard about green revolution, white revolution, pink revolution. So all this effort helped a lot to increase our food production. Still around 10%, 11% of the world population still live hungry. Another huge challenge is uh, in the next few years, you will see dramatic increase in the demand for the animal protein. At the same time, the, the crop based for vegetable protein increase only 22. It's almost 10 times higher for the animal protein. And among the animal protein, a lot from the meat protein. So that's a big scenario what we are dealing with. And if you look at the global meat consumption, so you can see the red color high. Of course, the Western, country, uh, Western countries, US, Australia, they eat more uh, meat compared to some of the Asian countries in there. That's more culturally and also other factories uh, economy. So years back, like Western countries, they have more money. So that's come some way related to the meat consumption. And if you look around the world, the pork is the most consumed meat uh, followed by chicken. But in coming years, the, there is a dramatic increase in poultry demand. So for example, uh, this one is a graph between 2005 and 2050, uh, whereas in poultry by 2050, it's gonna almost more than double. So there's a huge challenge for the agriculture industry, you and every student uh, uh, to help with this process. 
So this one is a global poultry consumption. Uh, you, as expected, the Western countries eat more meat than the uh, India, but uh, recent studies or recent surveys show that even in India, the meat consumption is increasing. So this one is a future projection, like which country eat the most. So you can see India is in the, the top, like the, the demand for the meat, especially from the middle class and upper class, is going to increase dramatically uh, in India. So the question is how we're going to feed the uh, growing population. And also, uh, the, yesterday's presenter, Paul, he mentioned a good point. A lot of people migrating from the uh, rural related to urban. So that also leads to more consumption of the meat. So this is the biggest challenge and it's a re really scary part. For example, if you look at the last 60 years, uh, there are three lines. One, the dotted line is the farm output, whereas the green is the labor and the, almost the purple one or the dark red one it is the land. So around the world, one of the biggest challenge is getting the labors. So the labors are decreasing, especially when people migrate from the rural area to urban, it's decreasing. At the same time, land to a certain extent is decreasing because the population is increasing. So how are we going to feed the world? So that's a place where technology plays a huge role. So when I came to US, I, was, I had the same question. How or why the chicken is much bigger in US compared to India? Because so I asked several of these questions to my professors, people working in this field. So first they told, it's due to technology. So when I heard technology, to be honest, I didn't understand what they meant by technology. So more and more I stayed here and more I interact with the people. It's a professionalism, how they uh, approach poultry industry, not only poultry, agriculture in general. So that's why uh, they were able to double the weight of within 45 days, the poultry meat, uh, you were able to increase. How? Because primarily due to genetic line, Dr. Churchill gave a really good talk about the genetic. So there are, these companies are doing amazing job finding the best selection, the nutrition, management, lighting condition, all play a huge role in increasing the body weight. So that's an example for a, a, how the technology can produce more. So this one is an example for the cattle. The same way you can see uh, in 2010, there were more production, the blue line represent the cattle. So the number of heads of cattle is less. At the same time, you produce more. Again, how? Again, with the technology. So understanding what is meat production or what are the different nutritional aspects required. So that's one of the reasons you were able to produce uh, more beef. So a little bit about the poultry industry distribution. So this one is a US map. You can see most of the poultry industry is located in the Southern Belt. It's primarily due to the climatic condition. In the Northern region, it's very cold. That makes it really challenging to grow. But the Southern region, that's a poultry belt, especially Georgia, Mississippi, Alabama. So those are really, really uh, excellent places for the poultry. And also most of the poultry is there's a big farm. And you can see in the Northern part, especially during Thanksgiving, the Turkey, uh, they have huge, huge farms in the Northern region, that's Minnesota. Uh, but in general, it's a Southern region, uh, you can see the poultry industry. So whereas in India, you can see it's scattered around, but majority, the big poultry operation, it's mainly from the Southern region, like Andhra, uh, uh, Tamil Nadu uh, and this region. So a little bit about the poultry industry, it's vertically integrated. I'm sure uh, several speakers uh, yesterday and day before, they talked about the vertical integration. Uh, basically, each company, they have their own breeding line and they give all the instruction to the farmers, all the operators, what kind of feed they need to give and what kind of management condition. And also, they procure the meat and they process it. So it's almost like a cyclic chain. So they have well control over the uh, operation not that way you, they can reduce the cost and also uh, more food safety the cattle production is a little bit different uh, it's not vertically integrated because it operates in different different segment the major difference is they have beef breeds here uh, especially in india you can see more dual purpose or draft purpose but here uh, they have beef breed so they have three different segments for the cattle production and also the feeding system is different 
So first they feed on grass, towards the end they feed on high energy diet, especially corn. Why they feed it? Because as a result, you can increase the quality of the meat. These are the different steps in poultry processing. I'm sure if you took classes with the uh, livestock production and if they live in science man, I'm sure they talk a little bit about the poultry processing standard operation this followed in US and India, like transportation and the modern inspection, stunning uh, processing, inspection, and further addition. Uh, in US, the, you, you may I will talk some of the difference between US and Indian system. So one of the major thing is inspection because food safety is a major concern. So why food safety is a concern? Because uh, people won't cook meat as like in India. So there is every chance if the meat is not cooked or they eat a lot of processed meat like hot dog or the related product. So if they are not cooking, there's a chance of uh, food safety outbreak. So that's why a lot of people or companies, they are really concerned about the food safety, like E. coli, Salmonella, Listeria, and uh, Dr. Sunil's uh, work on these pathogens. And also they use different technologies. This one is an example where they use some uh, type of um, equipment to predict the or uh, locate the fecal contamination. For example, most of the pathogens come from the fecal material. So if they are using type of scanners so they can identify the uh, uh, pathogens. Another important difference is grading. For example, once the meat is produced both in chicken and also in beef and other species, the producers get value for the quality. For example, prime choice select. So these are the different grades of meat. So if they have a higher grade, so they get more. So that's a really good motivation for the farmers to produce a best variety of meat. And also another major difference is, let's say if it is a carcass, beef carcass or uh, even the poultry, they cut the meat into different part and each part have different values. So that basically tell more value for the producers. So there is more incentive for the producers to follow some management practices. It's the same thing with the chicken too. So uh, most often uh, they prefer like breast meat so they can remove the bone. So people here, especially they don't like the bone in the meat. So they remove the bone and also most often they make a lot of different products from the meat. So uh, that increased a lot of value for the meat. So what a classical example is chicken wing. So for example, American football, so it's a Super Bowl similar to IPL. Uh, it's one of the big day. So they eat a lot of chicken wing. Uh, if you guess, it's close to 100 crore chicken wing just one day. So that shows how they market different chicken product. Uh, and also they have a yearly demand, especially uh, chicken is consumed throughout the year, not, not on a seasonal basis. So years back, uh, they had a very traditional system. For example, they kill the animal in a, uh, not in a centralized location, in a each location and they sell it. And they use one of the simplest packaging. But recently, or not recently, maybe the last decade, they changed to case-ready meat. So case-ready means enter processing occurs in a centralized location, and they ship this uh, packaging material or the packed meat to the store. So from the store, the people can uh, buy it. So that's a different type of uh, system followed in use. And also they can uh, change the packaging material. They can incorporate different gases primarily to improve the quality. Uh, it's very, very commonly seen. Uh, so this one is an example deboner. So they use this machine, they can remove the deborn from the drumstick. And most of the processing, let's say if you make the ground beef or cutlet or chicken nugget, uh, most of them are semi-automated. So for example, all the process, uh, it's automatic. So as a result, uh, it's more efficient. And also the same way, uh, the different type of packaging. So recently there is more emphasis to uh, reduce the amount of plastic. As a result, now the companies are looking for biodegradable uh, packaging system. Another uh, process help with the centralized process is the enhancement. So for example, when the meat is produced, let's say chicken thigh, they enhance with water, phosphate, lactate, it's primarily to increase the eating experience. For example, when you cook meat, 
uh, here they, they grill meat or they have a, a frying. So when you cook, it lose a lot of water. So when you enhance with the various ingredients, uh, you can increase the juiciness. So they sell the meat again here. It's a, a fresh meat or uh, never frozen chilled meat is most popular. You can see the ground ground chicken. So they use different type of packaging. So that's the most common way of uh, selling the meat. Uh, with respect to adulteration pesticide residue, it's not a big deal here because the most companies and or most farmers, uh, they have very strict uh, hygiene practices or SOP in place. And also the government, they do routine testing. Uh, so that's why uh, pesticide residue or adulteration is not a big deal. But antibiotic resistance, that, that's gaining a lot of popularity, a lot of emphasis to limit the use. That's why antibiotics used in human beings, they are not used in animals. And also, uh, as of now, they plan to phase out the use of antibiotic in a feed supplement. So they are trying to addressing the big challenge that antibiotic resistance. Processed meat, uh, as I mentioned in the first line, like Western society, they, it's a part of the, uh, even in the breakfast, lunch, they eat a lot of processed meat. So they use some of the, not the valuable cut, undervalued cut uh, to make different type of meat, like a sausage or chicken nuggets or a hot dog, different type of bacon they make from ch uh, chicken and also from turkey. Uh, the current trend, they want fewer ingredients because more and more people are more uh, concerned about the natural ingredients. So they want to see clean labeling. So they are, most companies, they're switching from a synthetic ingredient to natural ingredients. Now about the poultry industry in India, uh, I need to admit uh, Dr. Navina. So he, he is one of my best friends and also he was a collaborator. He came to us a couple of times. So I know him for last two years. So he gave a lot of insights about the uh, poultry industry in India. And also he gave me a lot of slides. So I really want to acknowledge uh, his part in this presentation. So if you look at the different steps in poultry uh, processing, so it's same, uh, both US and India. So they have different genetics, nutrition, management practice, slaughtering for the processing. But the major difference is this last two steps. And that's a huge difference because here people like wet market or they like to see the people, uh, birds killing in front of them. They prefer those type of market. As a result, the final two steps are not vertically integrated. So the, if you start from the genetic nutrition management, that's a PERCA integrated. Uh, it's almost similar to US and India, but the last two steps, that makes a huge difference in the profitability. And also that limit the getting more value for the meat produce so that in way it may affect the farmers. So the organized poultry processing that contributes approximately 11 percentage. So that means the vast majority of the operation, it's not organized. So why there is a difference between U.S. and uh, Indian poultry, especially in U.S., food safety is the key factor because the food safety that leads to development of a lot of food safety law. Because if there is a quality issue, the public is not worried, the government is not worried, but if people are getting sick due to eating food, then it's a big deal. And the second one, grading of the meat, because when you grade meat, let's say if you have a high quality meat, or if some farmers produce really good, they get value. So that's why they have a more centralized operation. And the third one, infrastructure. The transportation, it's really, really good. I'm sure in India too, the infrastructure is improving dramatically. And also when you sell chilled chicken, that costs a lot of energy. So that's another factor that drive in the difference in scenario. And also other one is vendors demand supply. Uh, I know in the audience, I can see Din Kursalke. I know him really well. He worked for uh, McDonald's. He, he understands really well, uh, especially here, uh, let's say Subway or McDonald's. Each winter, they demand specific quality. So that's dry. Uh, they are worried about the quality too. Then organized and profitable approach. It's really amazing to see how uh, well-informed the farmers are. So they attend different study session. They attend a lot of workshop. I know 
the meat technology when i was there they organized various workshops so these type of workshop helps a lot so that way people can approach professionally another big factor is food wastage uh, i have a slide uh, when you have unorganized there's a lot of food waste so the food waste means it's basically if you can save it you can feed the uh, people who don't have the food so this one is uh, again i got this slide from dr navina nrc meat so approximately 11 percentage is only organized uh, if you look at the waste stage due to loss it's close to like 4000 crores per year so that's the importance if we can have uh, organized or semi organized uh, we can improve the efficiency the things are changing dramatically in india uh, there are a lot of operation vertically integrated start from the genetic line to uh, selling the meat so this one is an example lifeline feed it's from karnataka uh, i just picked one uh, i know there are several several companies coming up uh, multinational also more from india too so they have a very very big farm and also they sell uh, different type of meat in their chain the key is establishing brand especially if you have a brand that you people can trust uh, slowly, steadily, people start buying the meat frozen or chilled, like uh, real good uh, wing keys. They are in the business for a very, very long time, Sugana Farms. Uh, and also, you need to tell a story. So, because especially uh, when you talk about meat, uh, people have a really, really bad impression because of blood, all the thing you see in the media. But uh, you need to tell a story in a good way, show the people how they do. That's one thing you 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 see in use a lot because uh, the consumers are changing dramatically. So establishing a brand, that's a key uh, in creating processed uh, meat. Another big thing that changed the recent time online or e-commerce, especially with the COVID time, a lot of people start using, mainly because I was able to join this seminar because it's more uh, web-based. The same way a lot of people start using online or e-commerce that has, that is that's going to change how the food is marketed uh, you can see uh, tender cut or sap like uh, different different companies uh, they are delivering fresh meat uh, with the swaggy uber rates uh, but still it's a very very small percentage it's only four percentage uh, but especially in china it's almost 30 percentage there's a huge huge market that's why a lot of lot of big companies are like uh lens they are getting a lot a lot of support from companies like amazon or google because there's a huge huge market so how the covid impact the poultry meat industry especially both in us and india it's mainly supply chain disruption because no one really expected uh in the march time especially in the us uh, how the supply chain will be affected because of the COVID, it mainly affected the workers. So as a result, a lot of companies, they were not able to process. And meat supply, it's almost like a cyclic chain. So they plan it really meticulously, like uh, so-and-so date, you have the uh, ha hatching, the next stage, and finally broiler. So it's a cyclic. So when you have, there is a break in supply chain, uh, that tremendously affected. Uh, and also, US, the supply chain breakage happened maybe for a couple of weeks. After that, uh, they were able to uh, recoup. It's primarily because of the integration. So there are a lot of uh, semi truck they can transport, let's say, if it's some issue in the north. So what they did was they transported all the meat to a different location so they can do further processing. So that's one thing it happened in India too. More and more processing because there is a less processed meat, less meat, uh, meat product. Uh, when I talk with Dr. Navina, what he's telling it to, so more and more companies are more giving emphasis on the, uh, uh, for the processing. As a result, you may see more change. Hopefully you'll see a change from 11% to 20% uh, in the year run. If you look at the chicken price, it's fairly stable in US. Uh, I, I'm not sure about the condition in India. What I heard, it's increased and also the price demand uh, dropped drastically. So that's why there's a huge issue, the supply chain uh, disruption. Of course, it will change definitely within uh, next six months. 
Uh, some of the stuff, uh, food industry, uh, meat industry, that you, I don't know if you can see it. Uh, you can see like they did some partitioning uh, just to avoid the uh, close contact, especially if you work in a working line, like some of the plant, they process lakhs of bird per day. So they use different line and also they decrease the number of workers working in the plant. Uh, so that way, so they drastically reduce the efficiency, but still the process is going on. So this is the one uh, happening in India. More and more companies, they're processing because uh, when you process it, you can uh, keep it for a longer time and also uh, they get more value. So now switching goes to the research priority. For example, how uh, the industry and also the government determine the uh, research priorities. For example, uh, I think some pop-up came, sorry. Uh, research, for example, how, I know it's a, in our college, we have four-year program, then, uh, then uh, from the pre-degree, you can go to the vet school. Uh, whereas here, it's slightly different program. So they, you need to get a basic degree first four years, uh, then they go to the vet school. Uh, basic classification is vet school and animal science, it's totally different. I'm really excited about the avian science. There are some university, uh, avian science and management, they give a lot of emphasis, especially uh, there's a state called Arkansas, that's a headquarters of Tyson. So the Tyson, uh, they contributed a lot to the uh, avian science. So some universities that have avian science program. And also there are a lot of funded research institute like NRC, the similar to uh, the ICR funded uh, institution, they do a lot of research. Uh, research area with the meat science, uh, the quality plays a huge role, like meat color, the flavor chemistry, the flavor of the meat, the tenderness, uh, because there is value for more tender meat and tough meat, then processing and food safety, that's a very, very big and also extension. So, so these are the, some of the research areas. So who fund, it's mainly through something like ICR, or biotechnology, uh, the industry also collaborate a lot with the uh, university. So that way it's a win-win for both. Uh, one can get the really good information also, uh, the, you get really good research experience for the student also the, for the faculty. So for example, uh, I don't know how problematic in India, but white striping and woody breast, so these are the two recent condition that affect the poultry quality. No one really knows reason. We think it's primarily due to the rapid growth. So if there is a rapid growth uh, that can affect the uh, vascularization and also that affect the uh, eating quality. So the, this one is a white stripe and you can see three chicken breast, you can see white stripe. So those are the type of priorities uh, government fund. Uh, that, for example, this is one of the minor research. So I work mainly on the biochemistry, why uh, meat is turning brown in color or why there is a difference in tenderness or meat quality, different type of packaging. So uh, we use various type of technique, more uh, basic type and also more applied type, like more packaging types or to more help with the industry and also to increase the uh, basic knowledge. Uh, now, before wrapping up food security, that, that's a big issue. As long as you have food, you're happy. But there are some part of the world, if there is a lack of food supply, there is a huge issue. So the, it's coming. So that's why more and more scientists, they are more concerned about how we can feed the world, especially uh, the huge demand, more than the meat industry and also other sectors. Another biggest challenge is consumers. This, with the social media, a lot of people write blog, tweet, so that within second, you can change the consumer perception. So that's a huge uh, problem, uh, especially within the meat industry and also the food industry. So there are a lot of really good trend coming up like they want more natural ingredients, fewer ingredients, less processing, and also antibiotic resistance. So one part, you talk about the science, 
and the other part like organic natural natural race that's uh, i know so, so that's going to be a, a really huge challenge for the uh, scientists also for the industry the key is it's not about the meat industry how you can make it sustainable uh, how we can make of the water resource how you can make of the feeding and also the animal welfare that's a big factor like hear more and more emphasis on the animal welfare, like how, when you can transport, how many birds you can transport. So they are very, very strict about it. And also that's why most companies, they started telling the story because a lot of people are disconnected from the farm. So as a result, they have no idea how the meat is raised or cattle is raised or powder is raised. So most companies, they're starting telling the story how the end of process work. Again, the food safety is a, major issue or the major emphasis value addition so that's the main thing uh, you can do especially in indian condition like that can provide a lot of income for the rural empowering the women uh, if we can do training that, that helps i know meat technology they a lot of value addition training so those are really really great thing uh, i don't think technology transfer so for example uh, it's an integration between uh, industry and the academia that helps a lot on also the research institution. It helps to technology transfer. And also a lot of people have really good idea, but they don't have the knowledge or they don't have the manpower. So a lot of uh, instrument uh, institution here, like you know, Oklahoma, we help with a lot of farmers uh, to develop the technology because the next big thing coming in the meat industry is a lab grown or cell cultured meat. Maybe uh, 10 years or 15 years back, the cost of just producing half kg meat was more than lakh. Half kg of meat cost more than one lakh, but a lot of companies started investing. Within 10 years, you will see a lot of companies coming with cell cultured or lab grown meat because more and more people are more concerned about the sustainability efficiency. So you, you may see a lot of algae or fungi based protein, uh, lab grown or cell cultured meat. That's going to be a big thing in the next five to 10 years. Uh, end of the day, even though, especially with the social media, even though you talk about GMO, or some of the benefits, some of the part from the, especially the plant, the consumers play a huge role. There are some really good technology around, but most companies, they're kind of reluctant to accept it. Why? Uh, because they don't want to lose the market. So finally, just thought how to enhance the value of poultry in the sector in India, more integration. So th that's key because part of the process is well integrated, but if we can integrate the final two step, or even if we can change from 11 person to integrated 25, that's a huge. That's, that's going to be huge because India is very, very diverse, especially the rural area. It's really hard to integrate, but you can come with some really neat uh, technology to integrate in SMSK and uh, that can really increase the value, especially the urban market. That kind of really drive the change because more and more people, I, I know when, you, when I come to India or Kerala, it's same, you can see almost all companies in in big cities and also a lot of people go for vacation outside so they are well aware of how the system working other uh, so that's going to drive the market they're going to use more e-commerce e so that kind of uh, really help with the some transition then consumer perception like uh, a lot of people have a really bad uh, perception about the meat like if you can tell a story how, why, why it is important, why we need to integrate, that helps. And food safety, again, food safety is not a big deal in India because most of the food safety outbreak occurs from the eating old meat or repeated you know, cooking. But food safety is a major issue here, but if you can approach from a food safety, then you can make changes in the law. Unless there is no changes in the food safety, uh, then the, the laws or the rules or regulation won't change. Another one is more value addition. For example, again, grading is not practiced in India. There is no inspection for the poultry unless it is an export. If it is an export, they do the inspection. There are a lot of specification. If it is not export, there is no value addition. So if we can increase or if, if we can sell different part, 
uh, once people realize uh, not all chicken part is same or if we can promote different part that's a great way and also different value added product and uh, definitely that can help i know it's uh, i include the picture of me technology because that's that's a place where i started my career and also i know the me technology they give a lot of training uh, to increase value addition also more about the hassip some of the food safety that really helped the uh, meat processors. And the one is more research and development. For example, if you have any students listening, and that's my request for you, there are a lot of things to resolve. We need more manpower, we need more helping hand. And other thing is, every research, let's say in US, they do research because they need to address their problem. But in India, the condition is different. We need to have some strong research and also we need to get some really good training. I know there are a lot of really good research going on, but we need to have more, we need to invest more in R&D. That's a place where uh, you, you can make a change because next 20 years, India is growing like anything. I'm sure it will be one of the top country in the world because unless we don't do research, uh, it will be hard to compete because most of the stuff we look at the US, UK, but most of the research that's applicable to their condition. Indian conditions are different, the temperature is different, humidity is different, all are different. So we need to have some really good knowledge base, then only uh, we can address some of the challenges. The food waste and environment, that's going to be a, a big thing in the future. And also, of course, uh, even currently, like if we can tell the story, uh, when you do unorganized processing, uh, that can impact the or increase the food waste or environment because greenhouse gas emission, climate change, it, it's it's going to happen. Uh, so if we can, we need to control not only one sector; it should be a combined effort. Another one, Ranjit yesterday gave a really good talk about the automation. Uh, even though it's fairly new, like especially new, a lot of companies started using AI. So these can really help increase the accuracy, especially in the meat processing and also in almost all aspect. Again, it requires a lot of really good data. That's a key in AI. So have really good data, then integration between computer science, data science. So it has a lot of, uh, I know like Avigen, Pfizer, they already using robotics, uh, some of the uh, AI, because that can definitely uh, increase uh, efficiency. A little bit about the training and collaborative opportunities. Like we, we give, uh, we we love to uh, bring people here just to give some exposure because uh, Tyson is just three hour drive from here. So a lot of people come here. I know Tamil Nadu uh, College. They have really good collaboration with the Oklahoma State University and also Akhilesh. So he, he he's. Uh, 91 batch, I believe. He, he's a head of the animal diagnostic lab. Actually, he is leading the uh, COVID testing. So there are a lot of resources. Uh, people can get some really good uh, exposure in the uh, different aspect of the animal disease diagnostic, meat processing, and also management. Uh, another collaborator, I work a lot with the uh, Anub. He is a 96 batch. He works on food safety, especially microbiology. He works a lot with the E. coli, salmonella, and also with the, uh, mainly with the poultry and also specifically on turkey. Again, uh, I just want to give an overview. Uh, th thank you again for the opportunity and uh, thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions, happy to answer. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ranjit Ramnath. Indeed, it was a very brilliant and informative session. And we have some questions from the participants regarding the topic. Uh, what is the actual reason American chick uh, will be to with, with toys than that of India? Uh, Shamna, can, can you repeat it? Because the sound was breaking. What is the actual reason American chick uh, will be twice than that of India? American Good. No, that, yeah, got, got it. That's a great question. I think I had the same question when I came here. It's purely technology. So they select one of the best genetic line. Uh, they 
I know a lot of research uh, they do because they focus on each and minute factor to figure out what's going wrong. So the genetic line is really good and the big factor is nutrition. Uh, they have done a lot of research on protein content, how much should be the vitamin content, how much should be the carbohydrate content. So they have very, very perfect nutrition. A lot of stuff are automated. They can really check uh, how much uh, is a feeding consumption. So if there's any change, they adopt some really, really good management practice than lighting condition, temperature. Uh, they try to give less stress. So that's one of the major reasons to see a, a huge dramatic change in the body weight. Even I was surprised too when I came last time, but more and more, it's purely the type of technology, professionalism, how they approach the uh, poultry industry. Great question. Another question, how costly in lab produced chicken in US was the natural chicken? Uh, as of now, there is no lab, lab produced. I just showed that that's a future. Uh, as of now, uh, no companies are producing. Uh, they haven't got the approval yet. Uh, as of now, it's very expensive because they are uh, fine tuning some of the steps involved in the uh, lab grown chicken. Uh, right now, what I heard is it cost uh, 1 lakh rupees. Uh, that's one thing I heard just to produce a half kg, but they are scaling down. Uh, I'm pretty sure it will be uh, almost the same price. Then only they can be successful or less price. Uh, otherwise, people won't buy. It. So you, you might have to wait for the next 5 to 10 years to, uh, to see that change. Okay, another question. What are some recent trends in processed chicken meat in, sorry. Which policy in your place you think India should adopt to improve quality of meat? That, that's a great question. It's really hard to tell one policy because uh, yesterday Paul mentioned a, a really good point. It need to be organized, the first thing. Uh, organized means the lack of integration, that, that's, that's a huge problem. Lack of integration is a huge problem. If we can integrate the last two step. So for example, uh, uh, slaughtering stage and also value addition. I think if we can make that simple step, uh, I don't, I'm not telling you, you need to have a big processing plant. You can have a semi-processing plant uh, that will definitely improve the quality of the meat. But the catch is, are the people willing to pay more for the good quality meat? That, because uh, that's a big, big thing uh, you need to think about. Okay, another question. What kind, what kind of new services can be included in e-commerce sites so that poultry industry can be consumer oriented? First, I would say the first thing is the consume perception because people should understand when you eat a fresh chicken or packaged chicken because they don't have to go to the store to kill the bird. Once they understand this meat is very hygiene, it, it, it's good for the consumer, I, I think that, that kind of change a huge impact on the uh, meat. For example, meat technology. I know meat technology sell meat. You can see how many people come during Christmas or Easter because people have some expectation the meat technology produce good quality. So that kind of approach, uh, consumer confidence, that makes a huge difference. People then once they buy it, uh, they'll keep on buying. I think Shamina asked a question like, what's the recent trend in poultry processing? That's a great question. Uh, here, people are using or consumers want less ingredients in the processed meat. For example, uh, if they want to produce chicken nuggets or to cutlet. So years back, they were more, the industry is more focused about keeping the quality for a longer time. Now they want more natural antioxidant uh, the consumers really love to see more uh, natural ingredients. With respect to products, uh, several companies are coming with a lot of real combination. 
uh, because US, you can see different cultures. So they are adopting a lot from India, Middle East. Uh, it's a combination. I, it's really hard to tell the trend. Uh, you may see more than 100 types of uh, processed meat products. Okay. Uh, one more question. Do you consider India in future can be export hub for, hub for poultry? What can be Definitely. the problem? Okay. Yeah, de definitely. In India, uh, without doubt, India is going to be a hub for everything. That's why uh, all big companies, I'm sure you probably know, know the real name like Tyson, Cargill, JBS. They already have plan in India. Uh, I'm, it's, it's really proud to see how India is growing. Uh, definitely, yeah. And there is another question. What can be the probable reason the large number of foreign NGOs getting involved in the issue of humane management, humane management of poultry? Please. Uh, that's how the society changes. Years back, we don't have food. They don't worry about the humane. Once they become developing, develop, or that's a place where people start talking about the humane nature. If you don't have any food, th there is no issue of humanity. But once they once the, everyone has food, then th that's going to be happen even in India too. Uh, hum humane treatment, animal welfare, consumer. Uh, you're gonna see what's the best thing you can do. All the companies doing here is tell the story. Uh, most companies now years back they have very closed processing. Now they are open to public. Uh, they have a open glass so they can come and see so that that's the best way there is no clear-cut answer the best way educate people that's why i'm really excited for this college we, we need to have more graduate tell them what's really happening in this industry okay one question please explain about synthetic meat synthetic meat i uh, to be honest there is no synthetic meat uh, I'm sure you heard about fake meat. There are different type of terminologies, uh, but it, there is no synthetic meat in the US. Uh, but current trend, a lot of companies are making meat analog. So what basically mean it's vegetarian and it looks exactly like meat because there are some segment they prefer to have meat like feeling. Uh, you can see the flavor, consistency, color. Uh, again, it's a small market as of now, but there is a big buzz. Great question. Okay, sir. Thank you. Uh, uh, what are the characteristics of characteristic of meat in high stressed poultry? Like I'm sure, uh, if you took LPT, uh, we learned about two different. Uh, stress conduct like PSC, DFD. Uh, if the meat is, if the power, if the bird is stressed, and if you slaughter it, uh, definitely the meat quality changes. Uh, more specifically, the pH. Uh, that's that's a big issue. Uh, that's why woody breast, uh, PSC. Uh, that's why most companies. It's really amazing how they transport the birds from the. Uh, Layerage or to the uh, truck and truck to the slaughtering facility. Some companies they use robots because they don't want to have any human interference because that way you can reduce the stress. And most of they use a lot of automation. So if there is a stress that's gonna affect the quality of the meat, um, the meat will be very watery or sometimes it become really uh, dark. Uh, the people here, especially, they look for the color uh, that can change the color, then that can impact the purchasing decisions. Great question. Okay, that's about the uh, discussion part. Uh, Sunil, sir. Yeah, Shamna, Dr. Ranjit, uh, it was uh, great hearing you. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, one of the comments is, you know, after hearing your uh, very uh, crisp presentation for the time you have spent with us, one of the problems which we could face is uh, the problem with the uh, fluctuating uh, feed prices we have in India. 
So that is number one. The second probably is uh, the as you have rightly pointed out the live markets which we are having, and uh, this again a problem which uh, has impacted and exacerbated during this COVID period because you know when the uh, demand from uh, you know your restaurants and other areas which take in these uh, birds is less then the farmers are uh, put to much hardship. So that is because you know, it has not been organized again, as we have said. And uh, even here, uh, we have found that a bird being sold for rupees 20. So <laughs> that's, a, that's a very, very, very serious thing which we need to begin. Because, you know, the large fluctuations which we are facing in this uh, yeah. in area. So that is number one. And uh, another area is, you know, again, you know, most of our consumers, uh, they prefer, as you again pointed out, this uh, live birds being slaughtered right in front of them. And uh, we have been selling, as you know, from uh, meat technology units, our uh, processed one, uh, frozen products. Yep. And uh, many of them come and they tell us, you know, so that this product is pretty old. <laughs> so, the mindset. So I think I think we really need to put in a lot of effort to see to it that you know, the processing is a thing which will carry us forward. And also because uh, you know when you can put away this live markets and this live bird retailing, that yeah. will help us in taking these products to different areas, which this That's live true. retailing will not uh, be possible. With. So yeah, these yeah. are just my uh, thoughts. And again, with regard to food safety, again a very very serious issue. Yeah, yeah. People should really feel the need for that. People should really feel the need for that. And one of the important things, as you have rightly pointed out, is uh, with regard to consumers, which they feel that the product from the technology unit is pretty safe. Uh, yeah. <laughs> because, you know, they, they, they are given a look at like how it is being done. So we have a video presentations. They can view live what is happening inside, what are the hygienic measures, and how it differs from what is happening in the market. So when yeah. that has been driven into the consumers, they feel that, okay, this is what quality is all about. I think we really need to make them aware of what is quality and yeah. make them define what they require. So exactly. Was, yeah. Yeah, it was it, uh, extremely wonderful hearing you. A lot of uh, fine thoughts coming from your mind, where, which I really appreciate. And uh, again, I, I don't know, Ranjit, with regard to our, uh, the, what do you call, you know, call it uh, clean meat or synthetic meat, or whatever yeah. it is. Now, what, what, are, what are the prospects of that? Do you think it really can take off? or? Uh, it, they are making a lot of money as of now, even though it's a very small sector. I would say two percentage, three percentage. There's a big buzz. Uh, but I, I know a lot of funding goes into it, isn't it? A lot of funding. Yeah, goes into it. yeah, 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 yeah. And I, I know I have a good friend. He was here. Now he went to Chennai, and he was telling that a lot of startups in Chennai, and yeah, yeah. a lot of companies are willing to fund them too. Uh, it's it's a future. Let's see. Uh, as of now, it's not a big, but uh, it can take off. Especially vegetarians, they love to eat it. Uh, they have the same feeling. Like it's almost like a chicken. It's consistency. But uh, what they're telling is, it's more safe, less ingredients. But if you look at the ingredient label, you need to add more ingredients to have the same consistency and taste. So that's the other side. <laughs> but consumers. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much, uh, Dr. Ranjit. Uh, Dr. Shamna. Yeah, thank you very much, Sunil Sar. Again, you, 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 I don't know how many faculties all taught us. That's how I became here. So thank you very much. And thank you, Shamna, for the invitation and excellent uh, job with this webinar. Thank you. OK, thank you. <clears throat> On behalf of the organizing committee, I would like to thank Dr. Ranjit Ramanathan for your valuable input input indeed it is a very informative and vibrant session and we thank you sir i also uh, thank professor dr sunil for chair the session thank you very much thank you, and there are uh, dr ranjit there are uh, many comments about your uh, presentation it was very informative and 
very uh, awful by brand and brilliant presentation thank you thank you thank you thank you all have a great day be safe okay rajat see you thank you sir yeah keep, we'll keep in touch right rajat yeah. sure 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 yeah, yeah. sure thanks sir thank you